It's another Transformation Tuesday, buddy. And yes, um, yeah, we got lots of education coming up. I mean, it's nonstop. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I think we're just like double down this week. But I'm excited for today because you're going to be sharing more kind of classic techniques. And um, I know that that's a big passion of mine. So I'm super excited for today. Well, what's really cool, Andrew, is I think that you know, I've seen a lot of a lot of it out there. It's all about discipline, you know, and getting back into discipline, getting back into. Oh, I like that, buddy. Do I don't have my? Oh, sorry, Dana. I got my Pinehurst. <laughs> <laughs> Dana's like Sam. Where's your Sam via the bug? <laughs> anyway, Dana, I have it. Okay, I, I got it. Anyway, but anyway, Andrew, I'm excited because it's all about getting back to classics. So let's get started, buddy, and let's talk about what I'm going to do. Uh, we, we, I want to really visit Dorothy. And for some of you that are so young, back in, I believe it was the 72 Olympics, I believe, was when uh, Dorothy Hamill kind of made it famous, a wedge haircut. And basically, the story that I know of, and there's so many stories, was it was created basically by Trevor Sorby when he cut a rounded bowl shape, and then he simply brushed it back, and it became known as a wedge. And then somebody in New York, I can't remember his name, cut Dorothy's hair. But anyway... Uh, what's really important is the shape itself. So discipline is really important and getting to know discipline. So as I'm going along, if you have any questions I want you to ask, I'm going to be sketching this out on the flip chart. So make sure you get some screenshots. So what I've pre did is I've actually pre-cut one side because this is all about discipline. So this is the shape itself in terms of what we're going to visit. And I have to say, Andrew and I were talking about this, but we both agree this is one of the most difficult shapes to cut, guys. And it's a difficult shape to cut because of the fact that it really requires consistency. Keyword, consistency in your elevation, the way you're over-directed, and your finger angle, finger position. So that's really critical. So I'm going to really break this down for you in regards to that. When you look at this, you might think it looks one length, but if you look at it, there's a small amount of graduation there, and that that comes from your elevation and your overdirection. So there's three movements that I really want you to think about. I want you to think about how we elevate the hair. Okay, look at how I'm going to give you a front view of this. Take a look at the comb, how we elevate the hair. That's an up and down movement, and that is really important when you're working with this particular shape. The next movement I'm going to give to you, now watch, I'm going to give you a profile view of this movement. Okay, this is the hair in its natural falling position. It's about how you over-direct it. Okay, that's going to be critical. A side-to-side -side movement, that's over-direction. And whether we throw it to the front, whether we throw the weight, if I over-direct back, I'm throwing more weight and length to the front. If I over-direct forward, I'm throwing more weight and length towards the back. So you think about this side-to-side -side movement, that's over-direction. The next one is our finger angle, the angle that we're actually going to cut. What is that angle? All right, and the, how you maintain the consistency of this angle. How did I move from this angle to this angle? I'm going to talk about that in terms of being consistent. If there's any situation that happens, Andrew, it's in this back area right here where there's a lot. And then I'm going to talk about how do you get rid of this ducktail, Andrew, in this particular case? There's usually, usually something that comes there. So I want to get started, guys. Let's just get, hey, Charles. What's up, Charles? Yeah, John Sahag did the cut on Dorothy. Okay, Charles, thanks for that, buddy. I kind of thought, oh, Andrew, perfect. Yes, this is exactly what we're creating. So watch, now watch. When you go, well, that doesn't look like it. It's when you brush this back. When you brush this back, hey, Charles, watch my camera angles today, buddy. All right. Now watch. When I come back, I'm going to do this. Now now you can just start to see how you get that, that wedge line in that. Are you seeing that, guys? And you just start to see it. See how it just moves to the back? It's just really a beautiful haircut. It really is. But it's all about the precision. Right now, so much shags and things like that. But I think from here, you can easily evolve this into a bowl, simply cutting a fringe or into a pixie. All right, let's get started, AC. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pre-section, and I'm going to work this wet. I did one side for you so you could kind of see it dry, the end result. I want to take my time because this requires precision. I think, you know, when I, anytime I cut precision, Andrew, I'm going to wet it down. When you wet the hair down, you have a lot more control of your sectioning. Next thing I'm going to be aware of, Andrew, is natural fall. Where does this hair live? So I'm going to comb with growth pattern. Once I hit the round of the head, what some people call the parietal ridge, when I hit that round of the head, gravity takes over and I comb straight down. And I'm using the white teeth of the comb. I'm going to work with a white comb on dark hair so I can see the line, the extension 
of the line that I'm going to cut. Let me repeat that. The extension of the line I'm going to cut. So I may think this is diagonal, but really having an extended line tells you whether or not that's diagonal. Okay, extend that line, use the comb to do that. So once I have this in natural fall, working with that Y to the comb, now I'm simply just going to find out that vertical transition of front to back. Okay, there it is there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my haircut. So I'm going to eliminate what I don't need. So you're going to see me working with our dry, classic dry cutting clip using that. I'll use that even on wet hair. Let's just make that a little neater so you can see. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you my first section. Then I'm going to back up and give you some visuals on this in regards to how this works. Okay, so watch the section I'm going to take. Okay, heads in the upright position. Okay, I'm going to take my first section, horizontal section. Okay, now I'm taking a horizontal slice, but I want you to watch, and you're going to understand why I'm taking a horizontal slice. I'm not going to take a slight diagonal, even though my finger angle is going to be slightly on a diagonal. Okay, so let's eliminate that hair. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take with the fine teeth of the comb because I'm going to be graduating this hair. Now, on this first section, I'm going to cut my guide. That's what I want to create. So I'm going to create a guide that's just slightly on a diagonal that does this. Do you see that? So now if I want to go in and find out where's my ending point of the diagonal, then this is a great trick, Andrew. I want you to just simply take a piece here. Look at the angle. So you can see that's that angle that I'm going to be creating. So I'm just creating just slightly of a diagonal in regards to that. So once I have that, I'm going to come through. Now I'm going to hold this and I'm going to give this one finger elevation. And I'm also going to work with a short shear. So I'm going to work with a 5.50 streamlined shear. And the reason I'm working with a shorter shear is I like to work with a shorter shear when I'm going in and doing my precision cutting or short haircut. It just really helps to give me control. All right. So now watch again. Here's where I'm at. Now tension. Are you cutting with tension, Sam? Yes, I'm cutting with tension. Okay. I'm going to cut to that knuckle. Then I'm going to readjust my line. Look how I keep my comb there. See that? So now you can just start to see how I'm going to just take off just that corner. Now watch this next section. This is critical. Okay, On my next section now is when I'm going to start to add. There is no, no over direction there. Now I'm going to start to add some over direction. My sections are about a quarter inch in terms of thickness of that section. You base that thickness based upon the natural dense density. Now I want this to move. If I just continue to keep cutting everything one length to that, it's, it has no movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something here with two combs. Okay. If I look at that horizontal line and that vertical line, now you know why I'm keeping my sections horizontal. Okay. See that section? It's horizontal. This is why I'm about to show you. Then that section is vertical. So if I keep those two sections together, then what I realize is I go, okay, I'm going to over-direct that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to over-direct that and I'm going to over direct it to a position of 45. So if I know that's vertical 90 and that's vertical 90, then half of that is 45. Do you see that, guys? See how I'm going to over direct that? But what I'm going to do, and rather than over directing the entire section, one of the best things I learned from a man by the name of Nicholas Charles, if you remember Nicholas and San Mateo, one of the things he taught me to do was subdivide my precision cut so you really maintain your balance. So Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a diagonal back section. See that? Now watch the comb be placed to that, and I'm going to over direct this 45. But now the line I'm going to cut is still that line. Does that make sense? See, that line didn't change. So what I want you to do is don't over direct. Put your finger to match that sectioning, and then now you're taking off that front corner. Remember, over direction is going to give me the movement. There's the line I'm looking for, and now I cut. Now, so let's take a look at this. If I place my comb there, and I just slide it over to where those two combs were, I'm over-directing it diagonally forward 45 degrees. Andrew, take a look at this. Watch. Never fear, Sammy's here. Okay? So let's give you a visual now. Take a look at the section that I'm taking. That's the section. Okay? So what I did was I took a horizontal section. I brought that first section down. Okay, and I cut my horizontal line. Okay, then what I did was after I bring my next section down, okay, sec I'm going to subdivide that. So let's take a look. Look at this. I subdivide that. See, I subdivide. This section is the one I'm cutting now. 
Okay. So what I want to do is I want to subdivide that. Excuse me, my dear. I'm going to stick this pin right in your head. Okay. So what I did, Andrew, is I subdivide that. So now watch the purple. So now I'm cutting the purple here and it is elevated one finger. You can see that. See how it's elevated one finger. So the front view, let me move her over here in the white. There's my elevation. Can you see that, guys? If you're loving this, come on, show some love, guys. What's up, Tara? What's up, Roller Girl? Okay. <laughs> What's up, AC? You like it, that, buddy? I All love right. it. Great visual. So now, thank you, buddy. So now, see, that's what's so cool. So now watch me execute this. I'm going to keep this right here. Okay. I'm going to keep them both together so you can see me execute the over direction. Charlie boy, look where I'm standing. Okay. Here we go. Now watch. Okay. So now you got both mannequins facing the same way. Okay. I'm going to see if I can. Oh, you just won't go any higher, will you? All right. Fine. All right. Now watch what I'm going to do. This is the section I'm cutting. See, rather than me cutting this straight down like this, it's going to fall blunt. What I want to do is I want to go in and give this some movement. So I'm going to take that line, that section that I have. I'm going to subdivide that diagonally. Watch this. And I'm going to over direct diagonal. Now, isn't this interesting? Look at that. That just put this section in between that dot and that dot. Now align my finger there and I'm there. Now watch this next one. There, I can't subdivide that, but watch this. Be aware, there's your 90s, okay? Your vertical horizontal. I want you to get this section right there. Do you see that? See where I'm going? So I'm taking this section. If I just take that, it's diagonal here. That's where I belong. Get my one finger underneath. So my ring finger, my middle finger sits right on her scalp. Boom, that's where I belong. Okay, stop cutting past that first that first knuckle, Sam. Readjust, especially when we're cutting uh, precision like this. Now, what I want you to notice is look at this in terms of when I look at this, let's just look at this vertically. When you look at this vertically, it's just got a small amount of graduation to that. And the graduation is created by the over direction. Okay, another horizontal section. Okay. Another horizontal section. Okay. Now watch my watch as I work to the top because the natural common tendency, Andrew, is when we work, we start to work up towards this area, up past the corner of the eye and work the top, we start to turn our hand. What I want you to do is maintain this line. See that line? I'm going to over direct, but my hand is going to come down to that line. Now watch this much wider area here, guys. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. Now watch what we're going to do. I go diagonal back. See that? Diagonal back. Now I comb. Put your comb square to that. Now just comb to you, and you've over-directed it 45. Now watch. Here's the thing. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to want to take that corner off. I want you to take your comb in your hand. Float that comb down to that line. And did you see how my, my finger angle? It just followed that. Let's divide again. Not going to get greedy. Wow, Sam. You're taking – it's like you're, you're – it's just taking more time. Guys. If I do this correctly, I will have less to clean up towards the end. That's what I mean by consistency. It's about being consistent. Questions, comments, Andrew? How are we doing, bro? Doing great. And I, I think this is a really important practice for, for so many of us because, like you said in the beginning, you know, we've gotten super into highly textured haircuts, you know, lots of shags, lots of movement to it. And even if you're not getting requests for this specific kind of haircutting, you know, the first three years of my career, Sam, I, I didn't cut anything blunt because I worked with TG and Tony and Guy. We yes. like sliced and diced everything. And it wasn't until I started working with Paul Mitchell that I finally had to cut something precision and blunt. And it really upgraded my understanding of how to control hair. Yes, that's so true. I think, guys, you know what? You might, might be watching and saying, well, that's not my taste right now. It's not about your taste. You know, have your taste, but really expand your taste because it's about the people that are sitting in your chair, you know, and, and there's a, this whole sense. Everybody's saying, well, the Rachel haircut is coming back. You know, a version of the Rachel haircut is coming back. So if you didn't like it, then you need to embrace it because it's coming back, but it's coming back in a different way. Fashion is just a repetition of the old and the new. And when things look my over direction, see that when things come back, they come back, you know, but they don't come back exactly the way that they were. They come back with a little bit different attitude, a little bit different character, a little bit of different movement, a little bit sense of different volume to it. You know, maybe it's right now. I think, you know, people say, well, what's going on right now, Sam? It's all about natural texture. I just feel a lot of people are really embracing natural texture.
Take a look, Andrew, and see how, look how I work with my hands, the back of my hands. So what I want you to do is encourage the hair to go into blow dry position. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do this and use the spine of the comb and just press it up against the head and do that. Now it looks like it's flippy. See how it flips? Now what that's going to do is that's going to tell my eyes, ha, 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 you made a mistake. You better go back and correct it. So what do you do? You start picking it up and think, oh, I got to knock that corner. That's it. I got to knock that corner down. But what it is, guys, is look at when I put this in blow dry position, my eyes right now are very, very pleased. So learn how to put things in blow dry position. Now, Sam, as you go to the top, do you, I still talk to myself, Andrew, if I, <laughs> hey, Michelle, I'm still talking to myself. So if, as you go to the top, do you change the sectioning? Do you start to turn it diagonal, the opposite way, diagonal back? No, I keep a horizontal line. But what I'm not doing is cutting. Watch, look, see that line? Look at that line. And look, let's look at the line I'm cutting. See, they don't marry. But the reason I'm doing this is so that I can establish that 45 degree angle of over direction. I find it keeps my consistency, guys, instead of me guessing at it. Okay. What's up, Tracy Ann Morales? Glad you're here. Anita Allen, S. April, Shirley, nice you're here. Uh, Teresa, there, love it. Always send your education. General I says, help me be highly required. And, uh, requested. Great, Teresa. Well, here's the thing, Teresa. Congratulations to you and pat on the back because what you're doing, my dear, is you're actually taking the information and using it. It's one thing to watch it, guys. Go back and say, eh, I'll never use that. Well, guess what? If you try it and you experiment with it and you play with it, you're going to go, okay, I like it, but I'm going to adjust it and do it this way. Does that make sense? So you discover things, guys. I think that's why it's so important. Every time I see something, I'll go back and try it. And when I try it, I go, oh, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to teach how to do that this way. So it's like my, my whole attitude, Andrew, is if I can find 10 ways in which to cut a one link bob, Trust me, brother, I'm going to find 10 ways to cut it. And the reason being is because I want to challenge myself, number one. But number two, I also don't want to get mechanical and bored behind that chair. Okay. Now, this is where it gets really tricky right here, Andrew, where that hairline starts to jump up here. The natural common tendency is you're going to want to turn the corner. Do not turn the corner. Okay. So now I'm going to take another horizontal section. I just don't want to get greedy and take so much hair at once. I think when we cut graduation like this, if you don't keep your sections consistent, then it can tend to get clumpy. Okay. Then you're going back in there and you're reconnecting, reconnecting, or readjusting, readjusting. Hi, Jessica. Uh, in Bo yeah, Jessica, in Bob's, you know, natural fall in Bob's. What would you do, Sam? In Bob's, I'd be using my one, my wide teeth of the comb. Why? Because I want to keep it consistent, you know, in terms of tension. That's what I mean by that. But here I'm using, I complete it. With the fine teeth of the comb, my last combing angle, when I say that, what I mean is what's the teeth I'm using to sweep the hair and then cut it? In this particular case, it's a fine. Why? Because I want more tension. If it was a one link bob, my last combing angle would be with the wide teeth so I maintain consistency in my tension. So I'm not cutting one section fine, one section wide, one section fine, one section wide, unless maybe you want this erratic texture, but then you understand the why. Is that making sense, guys? All right, Sam, focus, over direct. See, here's natural fall. That's natural fall where it lives. So I'm going to elevate it one finger, then I'm going to move it forward diagonally 45 degrees. That makes sense, guys? You see that? Let's give you a little bit more of a profile. Here's natural fall. I elevate one finger and I over direct, but my line stays the same. Okay, let's get that hair out of the way. Let's take this section. Now, watch my comb as I draw come from underneath. See, the hair is captured. Now set my finger in. Now look how my hand just follows that. See that? So I've got to over direct 45. Okay. Now watch, watch the line and watch my hand. See, my hand's matching the comb, but now watch my comb bring my hand to the line. You see that? That's critical, guys. Okay. I go diagonal back again, over direct, and there's my line. Let me show you the <laughs> let me show you the grain of the hair on that one. Look where I'm at. Okay. Look where I'm at. Now look where this hair lives. Let's examine this piece of hair here. If I comb that natural fall and then I've comb it down, here's where it lives. Look where I'm cutting it. That makes sense, guys. Here's where it lives. Okay. Here's where I'm cutting it. Okay. I'm taking a diagonal slice. So I'm subdividing this green line passes through all of these section horizontal sections. So I subdivide. Okay. So here, this is easy. When I get to this top, 
There's my horizontal. There's my vertical. Half of that's 45. If you want to get a visual, place the comb there. Now comb to the, that grain and whatever's left, I'll take. Okay. All right. Now let's go one more section. Okay. And then what I should end up with, Andrew, is kind of like almost a point in the front. You're going to see this in a moment. I'm going to show it to you. And it's just basically just the way that the, the um, cut, wor cut works. What I want people to understand here on this cut, notice this is long here and it gets shorter back here a little bit. Is anybody noticing that? And that's what really gave this haircut its character in terms of almost a firefly effect. I mean, some people go a wedge, firefly, they're very similar. And yes, they are. They are very, very similar in regards to the way that they're cut. One might be a little bit more extreme shorter and one might be a little bit more, have a little more length to it, but very similar in regards to the way that they're cut. Not a lot of high elevation, okay? Over directing. Now the back is to me probably the most difficult, okay? So now let's take a look at the front, okay? So now I'm gonna give it a swinger around to the front. So now can you see how that works, guys? Woo, man. I'm so proud of myself, Andrew. I've been cutting so many shags. Look at this, dude. I still got that's it. Good. I still got it. That is awesome. I'm All impressed, right, man. So, good job. Thank you, buddy. All right, so let's go to the back now. And what I want to show you in the back is, now what I'm going to do is these sections are going to go diagonal this way. So I'm going to go turn them and do this direction. But watch how I'm still going to be aware of now, because they're diagonal, I'm going to be the, the the line is there, so I'm not going to be subdividing as much. And you'll see as I work to, through to the back. So let's follow me to the board first, and let's take a look and see what we did, Andrew, on the board. Andrew, you want to come on up and see if there's any questions, buddy, or any comments? Um, Tara was asking, would it be correct at this point in front to follow the angle of the nose? Yes, but... Um, I would suggest uh, sometimes I'll get to this point and the client might say, Sam, I want the front a little bit longer. So that's, I mean, excuse me, a little bit shorter. So that's when I might adjust it. And what would you do, Sam? Well, one of the things here that I would do is I'd probably go to the corner of the eye right here. Then I would square that off and maybe knock off that corner. So now what happens is when it falls, it doesn't fall so much in that eye if that makes sense. So it's a matter of just detailing to the personality of the client once you get to this point. I think in the back in these, uh, what was it, 70s, in the mid 70s uh, to 80s, this was the way it was worn. Go back and everybody's challenging me, go back and Google Dorothy Hamill. Just Google Dorothy Hamill right now and you'll see that. All right, so let's go to the board AC and take a look at what I did here. What I did guys is I'm working just, in this particular case is just slightly off center. So excuse me if that's not center. Then I divided front to back and now center back. Okay. There's no horseshoe section or anything like that on this guy. So you're working primarily with the entire hairline to the top. Then what we did is I want to come through and I'm going to take this in green. I took horizontal sections here. So just follow me, guys. I took a horizontal section and look how these sections stay horizontal going all the way up. Then when I went to cut this, I'm going to show you the over direction, okay? And let's take a look at the over direction. The line that I cut is this line. It actually, because of the way that we're cutting this, this line does this, okay? Now, my over direction, when I cut this, there's that 45-degree angle right there. So I come in right to that, okay? And you're subdividing this. So look how I subdivide that. And everything comes to that. Everything comes to that. Okay. Now I go up my next horizontal section and I subdivide and I subdivide. Then everything, once again, comes to that. Do you see how this works, guys? Okay. Now my elevation. When you're doing this, horizontal sections, okay. So my sections are here. Okay. Then what I'm doing is my elevation. Okay, so my elevation is one finger, so my elevation is to there. Okay, so every section comes to that. So what I do, I'm not doing is I'm not elevating each section a little bit more and a little bit more. Everything comes right to that. Okay, so if you looked at it from the top view, Andrew, 
the top view, here's front to back, okay? My sections are, I'm going to give you the diagonal subdivide. These are my sections, okay? Then each section, let's take a look at the subdivide. Let's go in um, green so you can see it. This was green. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's go black. Okay, so now watch. So every sub section, I subdivide it. I subdivide it. I overdirect 45, overdirect 45, and the line I'm cutting is that line. Overdirect 45, overdirect 45, and I connect into that line. So that's what I'm doing in terms of the way I'm elevating it, the way I'm overdirecting it, and the way that I'm uh, my finger angle is being positioned. Now let's go to the back. The back is very interesting. Okay, so we got a very wide area here. I'm going to work once again, just working with water for control. Then I'm going to take my Redken One United. This is one of my favorite cutting lotions that I love to work with. Okay. Now, here we go. For me to have control first, as I go up, I'm going to get more hair, but I don't. I only need a small amount of hair. So I'm just going to take this and just divide it in half right now. Okay. So I'm just going to look what I, I tend to know, what we tend to know as the corner back. So I'm just going to work with that right now until I get higher. And watch what I mean. You'll see that. So what I'm trying to do is just eliminate my mind thinking so wide from the ear to the center back. I'm just going to think about halfway right now. And you'll see in a moment. All right. Now, once I'm here, I'm going to go in diagonal this way now. So what's, once I'm there, I'm going to kick that line in diagonally. So I'm going to take a diagonal section, give you a view here, three-quarter view. Okay. Now I'm going to take a diagonal section back. Okay. Take a look at my section. I'm going to take a little bit more hair. AC, is my hat in the way? I don't think it is. No. Okay. Maybe blocking your light a tiny bit, but we're good. Okay. I'll open her up a little bit, buddy, when I get started. All right. Let's just take that out of the way. All right. Now watch this. I'm going to give you right there that view. Okay. And once again, now I'm going to shift and I'm going to work with a swivel. I'm going to work with a 575. This is the artist series. This is actually my 5.50. This is going to be the swivel. And I'm going to work with this just because it gives me a little bit more control when I'm working with this area. I can turn my hand either way. See how the swivel shear works? I mean, you know, if you're having wrist problems, sometimes swivels are one of the best things to work with. Okay. All right. Now watch. See that angle? That's going to be the angle my hand. I'm going to take that away and just take a point of reference as a guide. Now, watch how I'm not going to cut just a straight line that does this. I'm going to work with the head. Look at the comb. See how that, look at my hand. See that? Now watch. When I get here, look at my hand. So if you look at this, look at this comb here, it's there. Now look at this comb here. Can you see how I'm going to cut that? See that? The mistake people make is they cut a straight line here. Then when you're done, you have a ducktail here. And you're wondering why. Now you're coming back in, recutting and squaring off the back to eliminate the ducktail. If we understand the shape of the head, see what I'm doing? See, I'm, see, look at my hand. Flat, flat, turn, flat, turn, flat, turn. So that's critical in, regard, in regards to cutting this. Because it's from A to B way down here, don't just cut a straight line, follow the shape of the head. If that makes sense, give me a big capital letter there, S, all right? What's up, Bill Santos, brother? Great to see you, my love, and hugs to you, buddy, and the kids. I hope you're doing fine, brother. Bill, this brings back some memories, doesn't it? When we were when I was training you in the salon back in the San Mateo days, be slapping your hand. Bill, do it again. Cut it again. Yeah, Bill, true or false? Bill Santos, he's on there. He's one of my um, uh, great teammates that I had when I had my salon. Okay, love the guy. All right, now look at me. What once again? Look how I'm working with my hands. And I just put that in blow dry position so you can just really get a feel for it in terms of visually. Then also what it does is it really helps the clients kind of start to see the control the hair is having. So sell your haircut as you're cutting. Now, let's subdivide. Watch this. Okay, great. Everybody's learning. We're doing great, AC. All right, now, subdivide this. All right, watch me go vertical. <laughs> vertical? Yeah, vertical. Now watch, AC. Here's my line. Okay, so I subdivide that vertically. Now watch. Do, are you seeing how that gives me a point of reference there and a point of reference there? You see it, guys? 
See, that's why I like to subdivide. Charles, does this bring back memories of Nicholas? Bill, does it bring back memories for you? Okay, subdivide vertically, comb diagonally, elevate. My elevation is staying the same, so I'm elevating diagonally in that back area. And I'm turning my hand as I go. So you'll see me sometimes taking off little corners as I'm going through and working with this. Okay, diagonal back. Okay, now watch. Now I'm high enough. Now I'm going to disregard and take the slice all the way to the opposite side and incorporate some of what I've already cut. Okay, so let's comb down. Okay, all right, here's my section. This is my section. Okay, here. Now watch me subdivide vertically and then cut that hair in that area. Subdivide vertically, cut that hair in that area. So here we go. Vertical. Okay, here's the hair that I'm working with. Okay, there. Now watch when I pick this up. Okay, watch how what I've got is all I've got is the section I'm going to cut. But look at the point to point reference that I have. That's what I love about this. Okay, vertical here. Boom, that's where I belong. Okay, and remember, remember turn your hand as you're working. I'm just going to clean my section up so you can see it, Andrew. I think staying in control is so, so important with these things. Look, at see how where I'm going? I'm going to give this way over here so you can see. Okay, good. Now, see what I've cut? So now watch how I'm going to start to really look how the hand will tell me when to turn and where to turn. So I'm here. Okay, subdivide that. Have control. And I'm going to look for my guide. Okay, there's my guide. And look at my hand. Look at my hand, how much that's turned. And you see how a smaller shear, guys, is going to allow me to get in there. Okay, let's just check. Get a blow-dry position. Good. Okay, come through. Look at my comb. So look, at, look at my hand. Look at, look at the angle. Look how much that's changed compared to where I started. This is so important. I want you to get this. Look at me use a swivel and just turn my hand. Okay, it's so important. I want you to get this in terms of the idea of subdividing, and it just gives you more. See, some people would take this section as one line and just lift it up and lift it up and lift it up. But what happens is you start to lose track of where you're at down here. So, I want you to subdivide, it really gives you a lot more control. So, if there's anything I want you to walk away from, it's just the way that I've subdivided this particular haircut so that I have consistency. Vertical and maintaining my degree of elevation. Okay. If I feel I need to come from underneath, I might be losing. You come from underneath and then check your guide. See, I'm checking my guide. Okay. So now that helps me to really get my elevation where it needs to be and adjust my finger angle should I need to adjust my finger angle. Sammy, I love this question from Son Sonia. She said, if if the head are flat, so I'm thinking she means, you know, kind of bulbous or more flat, then should we sh should we change the angle according to the head shape or skull shape? I, I would definitely change the, the angle to the skull shape. Let me give you an example. Okay, I'm going to use me as an example, Andrew. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, guys, my hair. Never mind. Not about me. Watch. Look at my head shape. Okay, do you, Sonia, do you see how flat that is? So if you cut me to the shape of my head, then all you've done is you've encouraged this degree of flatness. Do you guys see the flatness? Say yes if you do. Type yes in there. Okay. Irina. Okay. So if you see this, okay, then what I need to do is I need roundness. So what I don't want to do is follow the shape of the head. I'm going to give myself a little bit more length up here so I'm able to get a little bit more volume. For some reason, some people tend to think the shorter you take something, the more volume you're going to have. In order to get volume, you need length. You got that, guys? So you have to understand that. That's why when you get these short haircuts going, you better pay attention to the canvas. The canvas is the head shape. That's the head shape. So I think, you, yes, Sonia, you really have to pay attention to, you know, what's the shape of the head? Where is it flat? So now in this particular case, would this, this haircut be great for someone that has a seriously a, a flat head? Yeah, they could wear it. But what I'm going to encourage them to do is when they blow dry it, I want them to encourage a little bit more volume in this area because of the weight of the haircut. So, you know, it's, sometimes it's not, it's, it's could be 
this is the cut they want, but I want them to be aware you're flat here. So I'm going to teach you how to get more volume and more roundness in that area because that's the haircut they want. So it becomes in their finish where they need to really work to get the end result. Does that help you out, Sonia? You know, I hope that that does, my dear, in terms of that. Okay. All right. I'm just coming through now, just checking one side to my opposite side, looking good. And I'm going to keep going. I mean, it's difficult, guys. So, Sam, if you were in the salon, what would you do to cut this? Well, I would cut this differently. What do you mean? Well, because of the sake of time, I want to cut one side for you and then do the other side, give you the uh, interactive on this side. But if I was in the salon, I would cut the side area. Then I would move to the opposite side. So I create my balance. Why would you do that, Sam? Because my mindset is focused on this area over here that I've already cut. So this front area here, this front panel, once I cut that, I would immediately shift over to this side and cut that because my thought process is there. And then I get the balance. The client sees the balance from the front. All of a sudden, I got that. Does that make sense, guys? So, and then I'd cut this side. Then I'd go to that side. Which side do you start on, Sam? I would start on your strongest side. Set your success up first. I'm not a believer in terms of starting on your weak side and then going to your strong side. I really believe work on your um, uh, strong side first, then go to the weak side. Build that confidence. Okay. Now we're going to continue through. Okay. So I'm subdivide and I come through. Now watch how once you're going to really start to see how this subdivision, how it works. Look at, see how I'm getting, look at that point to point, hair comes off in between. I mean, it's just a great way to create consistency. <clears throat> okay, now watch how I'm coming to that back area here. Okay, and I'm just going to give her a little bit of a spin there so you can see it. Here it is here. Okay, now watch how, see how that's going to help me get from one point to another. But I want to put the angle I'm cutting, though. I, I switched from this angle, and I move, move, move. Why? Because the head is round in the back, guys. So you've got to cut to that roundness. Okay? Questions? Concerns? Are you learning? Are you learning? Okay? One of the most difficult. I am. I'm glad you are. What are you learning, buddy? What's your takeaway? Um, this is a little bit different approach than, than I had seen before as far as doing, uh, starting with more of just a straight horizontal section and then subdividing into that. And yeah. so that was really cool to see. Um, and I, you know, like I said, I think just that return to consistency and yeah. practicing consistency uh, with precision, I, I think that's huge for us, especially since we are in such a time of um, looser, high texture trends. Yes. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean after I cut this, Andrew, I couldn't go layer that top or, you know, texturize this guys. You certainly could. But I think it's, I think, you know, one of the things that we wanted to really focus on today was discipline. I think, you know, dicing and slicing, I think it's great to know that, but we really want you to know that I think you know, in today's world, you got to have all of these things in your bag, in your toolkit in terms of being able, because right now, for, as far as I'm concerned, people go, well, Sam, what's the trend? Hey, the trend right now is, is individuality. The trend right now is duality. The trend is uh, natural movement. The trend is how do I feel today? You know, there's nothing really strong. People are talking about a wolf shag. I think a wolf shag is a, is a, is a movement in terms of the way you're seeing volume, your way, your way you're seeing a shawlet. A shawlet. What's a shawlet, Sam? A shawlet is a shag mullet. Wolf shag. Okay. In uh, London, they call it a shawlet. That's what it's called there. But I think, you know, it's all about, you know, where you're at. So it's about combining things, you know. Uh, it's about uh, everything's becoming more hybrid. So I see that wolf shag as more of a hybrid cut, if you will, in terms of a mullet and a shag working together. And once again, it, 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 it kind of leans to um, supporting the consumer. I think they embrace that more so than they would a mullet. Although mullets right now are soft and very fashionable. Okay. People ask me, what do you think, Sam, is the next trend? I really believe the next trend is your, you know, bobs. You're going to start to see bobs. I think you're going to see short to long. You're going to start to see fringes are going to start to move side. I think you're going to pop more to the side and not sitting so much uh, down, but you'll see things moving more to the side and fringes. You're still going to see layers. And I think you're going to start to see more natural uh, movement. 
being embraced. People will start to diffuse their hair, crinkle their hair. And it's because they don't want to blow dry it today. Maybe it's a day that they don't want to blow dry. I think that's what's important. Okay, now I'm coming to that center. Now watch how I'm going to cross. I'll go across. I'll give you a, a square back on that. So watch how I'll cross the center line. See that? Now I'm all the way over my opposite side. So what I'm going to do is almost like I'm going to create an X pattern here. So take a look at the back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I've taken my sections. Follow this, Andrew. Okay. Excuse my back, guys. I've taken my sections that have done this. Okay. Now, as I get to the top, I'm going to start to extend my sections over. And now I'm going to take over here. You'll see me come back and I'll extend my sections over. So what I want you to do is take a look at how these sections are crossing. So if I take a look at this area here, I'm canceling out the weight by doing that. And that's what's so great about this. I love using this technique in terms of when you're uh, maybe cutting uh, anything that has a little bit of volume to it or anything that has a little bit of weight to it, and especially in that back area, this is a great way to go do it. So I'm going to come across. See, I come across. And then watch how I'll come back in, and I'll knock my length off where I want it so it matches that opposite side. Okay, remember, I've graduated. I haven't cut this line here yet. Okay, here. Now watch how I'm going to come over, opposite side. I'm looking at that guide. Boom. So now look at all this. Watch this. See that? That comes off. Now watch me continue the line. Look at the comb. Look at my hand. See that? So now watch my hand release that section and come up to this line on the comb, and I follow through. What I'm not going to do is cut this and then let go and start playing the tickle game. Okay. When you're here, guys, stay there. Stop lifting things up and up and up and going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and uh, tickle, 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 and then recut, recut, tickle, 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 recut. If you stay, keep your hand there, you're there. Just go in and um, al allow that to take care of what needs to be taken care of in terms of consistency. So watch again. See, I elevate. Okay. See, all I'm doing is just taking this corner in the middle of that X off. And it really just helps to keep that consistency. Hey, Sammy. Yes, sir. Uh, Marion Fricaro Johnson is asking, so the client's head is always looking straight ahead during the whole cut. Um, so I'm thinking she's asking, do we keep the head in natural um, uh, position the whole haircut? Or would we want to ever tip it down or tip it forward? That kind of stuff. I would suggest that now I come across the other side, guys, so you stay with me here in terms of the learning. I would suggest that you be aware of head position, whether it's down or up. Let me give an example. All right. Stay with me here. And uh, who asked me that question? What was the name? It was Mary Ann Fracaro Johnson. Thank you, Mary Ann. Okay, watch. This is my elevation. Okay. Now look at her head position. It's straight up. So let's, between all of us, let's call that 45 degrees. Everybody with me? Okay. All right. Now watch. If I put her head down, now that's 45 degrees. And I look at the mirror and I say, yeah, that's 45. Okay. If I put her head down and I push it down and I say to myself, okay, elevate it 45. I look in the mirror and I go, that's 45. Yeah. In the mirror, that looks 45. But in reality, if I bring her hair up, head up, can you see how that's no longer 45? Does that make sense, guys? You see that? So what I need to be aware of, if I push the head down, then I better know that that right there is 90 and that is 45, but it may not look 45 in the mirror. You with me on that? So I would recommend if you have difficulty seeing things, remember, your mirror will always confirm how you're elevating it, how you're over directing it. So look in the mirror. So now if the head is down and you look and say, well, that's 45 and cut it, what you just did was you just added more weight to that section. Now, when you go to blow dry it, you got a little clumpy area in there and you're picking up a texture shear and trying to texturize it out. Did that make sense, Marianne? So head position is important. I chose in this haircut because of consistency, I chose to keep the head upright. Does that help you out, my dear, in terms of that? So that's important, guys. Yeah, that was a great question, AC. All right, Sam, now what are you doing? I'm coming back and doing my X check right across that, that back and just coming through on both sides. We're just real simple, and it just really helps me to create the consistency in terms of this, this center back from one side to the other. So I went in and just did a, just a little bit. It's not so much that I have to go so, so extreme in here and take off, take off a lot. 
I think it's just a small amount that I want to go back in and just cross check. So it's almost like a cross check in this back area once you're there. Okay. And then once I've got that, then watch what I'll do. I'll start to come in and I'll start to release that length, that edge. And then you'll see I've completed, pretty much completed my shape in regards to the end result of that. So tell me, type in the chat box, what are your takeaways, guys? What Tell me what you learned on this particular shape. Uh, is it difficult for you to, talk, to cut this shape? If it is, just type yes in there. If this helped you to have a little bit of an easier approach in cutting this particular shape, go ahead and type that in the, in the box. But just so we get an idea in terms of how you're feeling about what you learned today. Now take a look at where I'm at. There's my back. Okay, that's my back. Now all I'm going to do now is I am going to take off my length. And then all I've got to do is just dry that side in regards to what I see. That's all I have to do, guys. And once I'm in there, sometimes I'll come back in and I'll cross check by just picking up my, my degree of uh, elevation. I'll just elevate that and just get it a really nice soft uh, edge, cut the edge elevating as I elevate. So I get a nice soft um, edge while I'm cutting. Okay. All right, just coming back in, seeing what do I need to clean up. Now watch this, okay? There's your wedge, okay? Now as I comb back, you can just start to see how that works. And now look how wide that front, that front area is long, so it just kind of just falls right into that, okay? Then we go to the back area. You can just start to see that back area. Now this side, I've not dried for you, but you can just start to see how that area is going to come right into that. Okay, maybe a little bit of excess weight that I see here. How'd you see it, Sam, when I brushed it, when I comb it? I'm not going to stand in front of you and claim that I'm Mr. Perfect because I'm not. All right. But that's it, Andrew, in terms of just recapping it, guys. What I did once again, guys, and I'm not going to dry that side for you just for the sake of time, but you can just start to see how this haircut works and what it does. And that's a Dorothy Hamill. In regards to that, and then bobs and pixies, it kind of fits, it, fits into that line of these bobs and pixies. Center part or where side part, main thing that you need to understand that I want you to walk away with, horizontal sections, subdivide those diagonal, over direct to 45 degrees. Remember, this will set up your 45 degrees, stay horizontal on the sections, not diagonal back. Uh, then what do you want to do is you want to come back into the back area. You're going to go diagonal back. Okay, then I'm going to cut right to that diagonal. But the main thing to remember here, Andrew, is the as you're cutting this, you may start to think I'm going to cut that line. But as you cut that line, you're actually turning your hand. You're cutting, you're cutting, you're cutting so that it actually rounds itself as it gets to that back area. Cool. Very cool. All man, right. this was a this was a great class, man. And it kind of. <clears throat> Excuse me. It kind of gets me excited. I I kind of want to go and like cut a cut a little fire firefly wedge now. Um, I, there was a question. Do you know where that name firefly came from by chance? No, no clue. I, I know that's from the Sassoon days. Mm -hmm. Firefly. I'll never forget being in beauty school and going through a magazine and seeing it in a magazine, and it was firefly. But yeah, firefly. Interesting, right? I, I'm not yeah. sure where that name came from. How do you recommend if there's any students out there? Google Sassoon. Go back and, and really do some history on Sassoon in regards to why they are who they are and how they got where they're at. I mean, when you think of precision cutting, the first uh, brand, the first team that comes to mind is Sassoon. Absolutely. And, I, you know, to that point, Sammy, I, I think if there was anything that we both have talked about a lot with this classic cutting stuff is if you are a newer person in this industry, please go back and research the people that built the foundations for you because there's so much richness in the history of our industry. You know, we really want you guys to uh, have a connection to that history. Okay, I'm going to give them a screenshot there, guys. I'll get out of the way here. They're all thanks, Andrew. Okay, you can get your, hold on, let me set up the computer for you. There you go, guys. Awesome. Yeah. But, you know, Andrew, I got, you know, I think, you know, people go, Sam, do you think we'll ever get back to precision? Look, guys, everything's important. 
you know, I think there's times when you're going to need precision. There's times when you're going to need to know how to texturize hair. You know, I mean, we've been talking now that, you know, uh, a texture has no race. So I would suggest, you know, how to do it's the same thing with skills, know how to do everything. I think hairdressers now uh, are not so much specializing anymore. Maybe you choose to specialize. Nothing wrong with that. I think that a lot of hairdressers are embracing color and cutting. I wish I would have learned, not stepped away from color. But the joke in the salon was you're colorblind. You can't even see banana yellow, you know, just focus <laughs> on cutting. I said, okay, okay, okay. You know, you. I kind of thought, okay, I'll do what they're telling me to do. But um, I had fun today. And like you said, Andrew, it took me back in terms of really – you're like, I had to really stay focused. I think when I talk about cutting those shags and I, how I talk, and I'm sure you've heard me say this, loosen up your mindset to create a shape that's loose. Well, now I couldn't have a loose mind shape, uh, mindset when cutting this. I had to stay really consistent and be in the moment. So, Well, and I think that, you know, to that point, we can loosen up our mindset and be more open to those kinds of things because we understand the foundations. Like I remember when in, when I first saw Robert Cromines take a fork on stage yes. and a pair of clippers and cut a graduated bob. And, it, I, you know, with I pull no punches. At first, I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, why would he do that? This is stupid. But then more I got to know Robert, I'm like, oh, okay, I understand what he's trying to do now. And he was trying to challenge us. He's trying to open up our mindset. And really then what I realized too, the reason he could take a fork and a pair of clippers and create what ended up being a beautiful graduated bob in the end it was because he had ownership of his foundations had he just started with a fork and a pair of clippers i don't know that he could cut that haircut but the fact that he had some kind of foundation behind him then that's where robert can step out and do these kind of just like crazy things that blows our mind because he still has those foundations well he understands the why Yes. You know, if you understand the why, it makes your so much work easier. If you cut by feel, that requires time. Yeah. So, and we all know what time is about right now in today's world. 